Good evening and welcome to the Hamden Town Council meeting for August 1st, 2016. At this time, could you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The next item tonight is the consent agenda. Does anybody have any questions on the consent agenda? Move we adopt the consent agenda. Second. Second. Discussion? Any public comments? Seeing none. All in favor? All opposed? Thank you. The next item is public comments. At this time, if anybody in the public would like to speak about anything that is not on the agenda tonight, this is your opportunity. Do we have any public comments? Seeing none. Move on. The next item is news presentations and awards. Uh, tonight we'd like to recognize uh, Mallory Bruin from Reedsbrook Middle School. And if she could join me up front here, I would appreciate it. Yeah. Hi there. This is a certificate from the town of Hamden, certificate of recognition for Mallory Bruin in recognition of outstanding performance in the All-American Soapbox Derby World Championship, first place. Unbelievable. In case anybody in the public doesn't know, she was in Akron, Ohio, racing against a hundred other Soapbox Derby contestants, and she won first place. It's quite an accomplishment. And uh, I remember years ago, it's not as easy of a job as people think to make those things go. And yeah. the other thing I appreciate, it's, I know it's a family thing. It isn't just Mallory. There's a lot of work that goes into it from her parents. And it's nice to see that a, a family doing that together. And uh, I think you did a great job. And maybe we'll see you on the NASCAR circuit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, the next item is uh, public hearings. There's none. Nominations and appointments and election, there's none. Next item is unfinished business. Request for authorization to use public works equipment reserve funds in the amount of 36500 for the purpose of purchasing a public works plow truck. Uh, it was recommended in finance earlier tonight to send it to council. Um, do I have any dis motion? I make a motion that we authorize the use of public uh, work equipment reserve fund in the amount of $38,500 for, for the purpose of purchasing a public works snowplow. 36.5. Second. Discussion? Terry? Thank you, Mayor Ryder. This vote is more than just about whether or not to buy a new plow truck. This vote has the potential to return us to the days when taxpayers could not rely upon their understanding or interpretation of, of what was being presented and voted on by the council. A time when the council's response to taxpayers' negative reactions to a particular outcome was, it's not our fault that you failed to parse our words. It's not our fault that you failed to recognize the nuances embedded in our statements. Unacceptable then and unacceptable now. Town Manager Jennings recently presented the budget numbers in a manner which actually restored my and others confidence in what was on the table and for that we thank you Mr. Jennings. When the Public Works budget was up for consideration we discussed the need to provide for the future replacement of a plow truck. The best way to prepare for such an expensive eventuality is to annually allocate funds to a reserve account resulting in accumulated balance sufficient to facilitate a purchase. Being both sound public policy and prudent fiscal management, I joined the rest of the council in approving that line item. Because Mayor, Ryder, because Mayor Ryder's leadership, the sincere efforts of most of the council, and the transparency of Manager Jennings had an effect turned off my skepticism filter. I had not even considered 
that the plain language and the reasonably presumed intent of the reserve allocation meant anything more than planning for the future. Two weeks ago at the Finance and Administration Committee, we were asked to consider deviating from the usual request for proposal protocol to allow for the immediate purchase of the aforementioned plow truck. It should be no surprise to anyone that my bullcrap meter spiked into the red zone. A majority vote approved the policy deviation and the issue was referred to the Infrastructure Committee for further consideration. At no time during the budget session was there any mention, therefore, no discussion of an immediate need to replace a plow truck. At the infrastructure, there was an attempt to justify an immediate expenditure of $170,000. One justification was that the added load capacity would enhance its utility and provide for more effective and efficient snow removal operations. Both laudable but neither substantiated by any sort of cost-benefit analysis beyond presumed, uh, presupposed results. There was no claim of imminent failure, not even any claim of anticipated failure. Immediate need? No. Immediate want? Yes. The least palatable and the most objectionable statement of justification was that since the council had approved an allocation to a reserve account that was, ta that was tantamount to a pre-approval of an immediate purchase. Needless to say that my bullcrap meter vaporized. Such statements are reminiscent of the tactics employed by previous regimes to get what they wanted by any means. The overt fallacy of such a position is that an allocation to reserve account is discretionary and therefore may fluctuate from year to year when taking the overall taxpayer burden into consideration. Converting a discretionary reserve allocation into an obligatory debt payment eliminates any flexibility. Acceptance of this position, in effect, relegates all current and future capital reserve accounts to a status akin to a pre-approved credit card, a status not even close to the original intent and generally accepted purpose of such reserve accounts. Disingenuous then, disingenuous now. Please do not return us to the days when taxpayers are skeptical of what we say and dread what we will do. Please do not jeopardize the strides we have made in restoring the taxpayers' faith in the integrity of this council. Please vote no. Any other comments? Any public comment? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Thank you. Next item on the new business is a recommendation of Chief Joe Rogers for the turnout gear cleaning drying system as bid by Industrial Protection Services on July 28, 2016, and the request for authorization to use matching grant reserve account funds in the amount of $818 for its purchase. The grant is $17,196 for the federal government for the purchase. The town share would be $818. Do I have a motion? I move that we authorize the expenditure of $818 in matching grant reserve account funds for this acquisition. Second. Discussion? Public comments? All those, uh, Council Marble? I just think, you know, for the public's sake, once again, we ought to thank uh, the chief staff for the initiative to uh, write grant applications and secure them and manage them to bring resources to the town that we otherwise wouldn't have. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? Thank you. The next item is discussion for the timeline and process for the anticipated local referendum November 8, 2016. Town Manager Jennings. So, earlier this evening at the uh, Finance Committee, I uh, briefed the committee in detail about the uh, process requirements to go to the voters to seek authorization to borrow funds for capital projects. And we talked about uh, four uh, potential projects that could go to referendum this November. 
Uh, one is the reconstruction of uh, 1.73 miles of Main Road North. Uh, this is a project that's uh, on the main DOT list for funding. And if it goes forward, would be a 10% uh, match. Uh, so it's a $4.65 million project of which uh, the town would be responsible for 465000 So while that's uh, an excellent deal in terms of uh, state local match, 465000 is more than you would want to absorb in a single budget year. Uh, so that's being looked at uh, for multi-year borrowing. Uh, the second item is uh, the reconstruction of Schoolhouse Lane between Old County and Route 1A. Uh, that's estimated to be a $310,000 project uh, because that is not a state road that would be entirely borne by um, the town of Hamden. Uh, so that's uh, the second project that we're looking at. Those are both on the uh, general fund, general obligation side. Uh, the third project that I referred to is on the sewer side, and this is to do with the uh, town of Hamden's obligation uh, under its uh, interlocal agreement with the city of Bangor uh, for the discharge of uh, uh, the town sewage to the Bangor treatment plant. Uh, Bangor has initiated significant capital improvements uh, that are, as I understand it, long overdue up there, uh, but we are responsible for a share of that cost. So we're still working with the city of Bangor to determine exactly what the cost would be. Uh, we estimate it be in the range of $400,000. Um, so that's another expense that we would look to uh, space out over several years. That would be funded out of uh, sewer funds. Uh, and finally, as people are aware, uh, the sewer fund is currently behind on its uh, bills to Bangor uh, significantly. And so the uh, uh, discussion is whether to borrow the funds to make whole our obligation to Bangor and then pay off a note over a couple of years. So each of those four items uh, will be uh, presented in detail at the next meeting two weeks from tonight. And at that time, the council will be asked uh, uh, which uh, up to and including all four of those uh, may be uh, brought forward to the voters for referendum. Uh, in addition, we did talk earlier tonight about the uh, Western Ave sidewalk project that's been underway for a number of years and there is funding that's been previously allocated. I'm going to brief the council on that project, uh, what the costs are and how that's proposed to be funded uh, so uh, we can stay the course or uh, that could be at the council's option that could be brought into the uh, November referendum as well. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Council McElvoy? Uh, Mr. Jennings, how many, if any, public hearings are there on a, because uh, I've never gone through a bond issue thing, so I'm just kind of curious how many public hearings there are before November 8th. So if the council were to adopt an ordinance uh, on August 15th to authorize the borrowing, uh, there's uh, uh, the public hearing on that ordinance would take place on September 7th. Um, um, the, that would be the only scheduled hearing. Uh, the significant amount of lead time, and I can turn it over to the town clerk, but uh, she can speak to this in more detail, but there's quite a lot of time that goes into programming the ballot and getting the language just right. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of lead time needed. Uh, for that purpose, but it's just the one, one hearing. That's not to, that wouldn't preclude the council having informational meetings leading up to November, and in fact, one of the precedents that we've looked at is what was done back in around 2000 with the business park. At that time, uh, the town did a flyer, informational flyer that was nicely laid out with uh, clear information. And I don't know, I haven't looked into how that was distributed, but uh, we've definitely talked at a staff level about. Uh, whatever comes out of that uh, recommended ordinance for borrowing that we get the information out as broadly as we can and as clearly as we can and what's proposed for borrowing why and so forth well, thank you any other questions any public comment question does the city of bangor charge you interest on past due balance <laughs> <laughs> you ought to be a member of our finance committee that 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 <laughs> Why 
don't you just pay them up to date over the course of two years and save interest money? Why would you take out a loan for that? That is one of the questions that the, the uh, Finance Committee asked earlier this evening, so I'll be prepared for that two weeks from tonight in terms of what the uh, relative costs of borrowing with the interest versus not. Uh, but the other side of this is uh, when I started here last August and uh, started to dig into the sewer uh, issue, I uh, found and, and have the Council's aware that uh, we were in October of 2015, we had not paid for service to the city of Bangor dating back to January of 2014. <laughs> there, but there's a so as the new manager they've uh, they've given me some uh, good you know some time goodwill time to help solve the problem uh, but at this point we're uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars behind uh, so we've you know we're in a, a de deep hole and so the question is uh, it, it is a conversation we're going to have with the finance director um, in Bangor to see whether there's an opportunity to stagger the payment but but what we talked about earlier tonight no decisions have been made it's up to really what the council decides two weeks from tonight and then what the voters decide uh, but the discussion was uh, where the sewer is paying off an existing bond in FY 18 and therefore in FY 19 there's about 95,000 that it will not have to pay could we hold off on paying for our share of the capital improvements until FY 19 if we make whole what we owe them to date. So we're going to try to negotiate the best deal we can, uh, but just like we are, they've, they've got to meet their cash flow needs. So, but it's, it's a very good question, one, one we're looking into. Any other comments? Further discussion? Okay, next item is committee reports. Councilor McAvoy, services. Uh, the Services Committee has not met since the last uh, Council meeting, so uh, I have no report. Thank you. Infrastructure, Councilor Marble. As was referenced earlier, infrastructure met last week. Uh, we spent a little time updating the sewer financial status as we're doing this evening. Um, we read correspondence from BACS, which is the Bangor Area Comprehensive Transportation System. I think that's what that acronym stands for regarding their 2020 and 2021 capital work plan. Um, a resident of the town, I think she lives on Main Road South, uh, brought some concerns about uh, truck Jake brake noise uh, via Councillor Wild, and um, staff agreed to look at a couple options before we fully revisit a policy which we had eliminated within the past year. Uh, there was discussion about who pays for the sewer service for the VFW fields um, and that's been an ongoing uh, service brought by the town to that volunteer effort there's a facility there um, and I think it's going to be folded into the recreation budget going forward if I remember right um, looking at and when I say looking at that's Kyle and town staff uh, looking into maximizing the investment we made in GPS software <laughs> Um, about the GPS units placed on Department of Public Works vehicles and operations, uh, discussion of fleet management and the proposed financing of the plow truck, which you again heard about this evening, um, and discussion of the work plan and priorities for fiscal year 17, which is folding into um, an overall discussion on that, which will probably hit planning and development or admin and finance. When are we when are we going to bring the priorities from the various committees to one place? Uh, two weeks from tonight. Okay. At, at administration and finance and then at council. Thank you. And that's it, I think. Thank you. Uh, planning development. Uh, planning development met on Wednesday the 20th. Uh, we discussed the uh, business park agreement. Uh, town manager updated us on that where we stood uh, primarily with TIF agreements. Uh, we had an update on MRC Fiber 8 uh, and the DEP permitting status of that. Uh, I believe at that time was also brought in the trust, or was that something we talked about later? Uh, did we mention that? It may have been mentioned. Well, it may have been mentioned anyways, but can I talk more about that? There is a, MRC has set up a 
trust for 40 acres of land uh, in this uh, development. And in order to have a trust, you have to have uh, a trust to run that. And so far, there is no trust that wants to run it. So it's kind of leaning towards the town of Hamden. This is something that once you take over, goes on forever. Children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, et cetera, et cetera, down the road. So that is coming up at our next meeting um, Wednesday night, I believe. No. No. No, the 17th, 17th meeting. Right. Uh, yeah, not this Wednesday night. We need more information on it. Uh, so that will be something that we'll be, be battering around as to which way to go, what's going to happen with it, what we do with it. Um, and I believe it's something that needs to be done before construction can start out there. Um, and the last thing we discussed was uh, a zoning uh, amendment and zoning problems on, uh, on Dewey Street. And um, that's gone back to the town manager and probably come up at a future discussion for development. And that's it. Thank you. And finance administration earlier tonight, uh, we discussed authorization for the plow truck, which we heard the discussion earlier. Mm -hmm. That's for 36500 on a five-year plan. And we had the clean and drying system bid with the federal government matching grants. <coughs> that was authorized earlier tonight. Those were discussed. And then we had discussion of what was going to go on the referendum for November. And we discussed the priorities for finance and administration for the next year on what needs to be done and what we're going to look into getting accomplished. The next item is the town manager's report. Town manager Jennings. I do have a, a few items to report that were not on the agenda. Uh, one is to uh, let people know that our new town planner, Karen Cohen, uh, did begin work last Monday and uh, had a great first week getting oriented both to the community and some of the present issues. Um, as she's uh, been, uh, she's aware that the top three priorities that the uh, Planning and Development Committee has set for her office uh, are a town center plan, which we expect will lead to uh, zoning revisions. Um, the uh, getting the uh, business park and the TIF agreement uh, back to where it needs to be and the uh, overall ordinance codification. I would like to thank both Rosemary Besenson and uh, Miles Block for uh, really stepping up, providing a lot of effort while we were short staffed. Uh, the second item is the tax anticipation note. Uh, we're at work on that and two weeks from tonight you will have uh, bids before you to select uh, hopefully a uh, uh, bank to work with and uh, so we can stay current on our bills. The third item on Children's Day, the uh, Hamden Children's Day Committee's hard at work on preparation for this year's event, which will take place on Saturday, August 20th. Uh, this is a citizen committee, not a town committee, uh, led by Kurt Mathis, Janet Hughes, Tom Brand, and Bill Shakespeare. And uh, I wanted to commend them for their work and dedication, as well as Recreation Director Shelley Abbott, who's committing significant time toward planning the event. Uh, volunteers are still needed on the day of the event on Saturday, August 20th. Uh, so if anybody out there is, uh, is available and interested, uh, please contact Shelley in the rec department uh, or stop in at the town office. Um, the, second, the next item is uh, just to let you know the second quarter sewer bills have been mailed. And uh, although we did do a lot of outreach with mailings and hearings, uh, we've had a lot of people come in with questions about the increased rates and so we're happy to talk with anybody to uh, uh, explain why the change was made and why it was needed and we have set up a website hamdenmaine.gov slash sewer that has uh, all of the backup and uh, so the increased uh, uh, fees are going to allow the sewer to get back onto a solid financial footing and get current with its obligations. And then finally, I wanted to update the council that the uh, drainage problem here at the Public Safety Building, uh, it, that the Public Works Director has come up with a fix for that to get that water away from the foundation. And they're going to uh, do that work this Thursday and Friday. And assuming that's successful, that's going to allow us to go forward with the remainder of the flooring project that began last year. Thank you. Next item on the agenda tonight is councilor comments. Councilor Sroyce. No comments. Councilor McPike. Uh, just an update uh, on the um, environmental trust. Um, I, we have had the first meeting of two of us 
uh, and uh, we are looking for the third trustee, and uh, we, I've already approached one person and been uh, declined, and we'll be talking to someone else. So hopefully we'll be getting the three of us done um, shortly and can set up our first meeting on that. Thank you. Councillor Wild? No comment. Councillor Marble? No comment. Councillor Comier? No comment. Councillor McAvoy? I just want to remind the fine citizens of Hamden to shop local and buy American. Good night, Hamden. Thank you. Uh, my comment is, I guess tonight it's uh, always nice to give out these achievement awards to these uh, young people in town. I've had the pleasure to give out several of them in the last year, and uh, it's pretty good to see some nice young people coming up in the town of Hamden. It kind of makes you proud to be a part of the community and see what's going to follow along in our footsteps. Uh, and with that, thank you and good night. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Thank you.